This is a time we need to ascend. We not only need to press through. Many people want to just put their head down and press through. No. The Lord is saying lift your head and come up hither. Not in pride. Lift your eyes to the hill from which comes your help. Every day you don't get what you've done. He showed you mercy. And it's new every day. And you dare worship anyone but him. And by him I mean Jesus. Lord and Savior, Yahshua HaMashiach, Yahweh, the only living God. Good day, beloved. Thank you for joining me again today on Preach Be Your Voice, Not an Echo. I am going to keep this rolling. Again, sometime I will end with prayer. Sometime I will begin with short prayer. But I'm going to start spending that time along with the Lord in prayer. Uh, I have created enough uh, uh, a, pray li a prayer list with all of the powerful prayers because I did that because I needed people to get the rhythm of praying scripture. And um, the Lord is just going to have me recording so much that I'm not going to do long prayers uh, on every one of them because uh, I have to continue to move forth. I'm still drunk in the spirit off the last verses I just delivered. When you sit and I ain't even got to hear it, I know there's going to be so much better going in than it was coming out when I go and listen to that message with you on live chat. I already know it's going to get me excited all over again because I'm still drunk in the spirit off that one right there because what they thought they were going to do for bad is going to be for good because you're at home. I, I got some messages that, that, that are coming in the world. I would it beseech you by the mercies of God, those of you who have subscribed, to share my channel, and not only that, but to click the little bell so that you do not miss an upload because you do not want to miss these messages. They are instructive. This is a window. The heavens are open. This stuff needs to be being done right now. You're going to see the difference on people who don't do it. I'm telling you, you're going to see it. It doesn't matter that you say. It doesn't matter that you are uh, a Holy Spirit filled. Which if you're Holy Spirit filled, you're going you're gonna, you're gonna to know the time and you're going to perceive these things. Your crying and, and, and people doing you wrong ain't going to mean nothing if you don't execute his word, if you don't declare his decrees, and you don't stand in faith and say back to him what he said to you, which is your testimony, we're not going to see any of the goodness he's about to pour out. He's not going to just feel sorry for you. He will respond when you declare his word. You don't get to just weep, and weeping is for somebody else. You must execute. Your tongue is as a pen of a ready writer. It is indicting the thing I speak on things touching the king. My tongue is as the pen of a ready while you must say his word. That is your testimony. We overcome by the word and our testimony. What is your testimony? You heard the word, then you believed that word, and you said his word back to him. That's your testimony. Uh, testifying as you talking about his goodness and what he did and what he changed from. Your testimony is you believe in that word and you saying his word back to him. That's how you overcome. That's when you begin to get instruction. When you start believing his word and you start saying it back, he starts to light your way. It's a message, boy, that came out so beautiful. When he took me to that scripture, I never saw that before. Not that way. That when you receive his word and you say it back to him, he starts to give you wisdom in situations. Not just, Lord, what do I do, what do I do, what do I do. When you start declaring his word, you will just be led what to do. If you believe the word and decree the word, the Lord, it's going to light up. It's going to give you your path. As you sent it back to him as your testimony. His testimony are his words. His counsels are his words. His commands are his words. I'm going to get right into this one. The one I just recorded is this honor has all the saints to execute the judgment that is written up on the heathen. It is vengeance. It's a time of vengeance. It's a day of vengeance. And we need to execute it. You got to go to the scripture. Don't miss these messages because I told you this place ain't never going to be the same again. Back when I began to give word on this, that when this stuff hit, don't look for upturn. It's going to be, it's a reversal. It's an overturning. You used to eat scraps. They're going to be having the scraps. They were living in the best. Now you're going to live in the best. All our turmoil was going on because he knows the people he give it to going to help and feed and sustain others. Not just selfishly sit on it and boast and, you know, post up like they were doing while everybody was lifting them up. You got to receive this word and you got to begin to execute it because you have to be with him. With him means what is he saying now? His relevant word is revelation word. You can't separate the two. The Lord thought I told me relevant, 411, relevant to now. You need to know his word now. And that now word is revelation. Revelant. Revelation and rev relevant can't be separate. They're the same. Let me keep on going. 
Now, I don't want to miss this message because if you're on the wrong side, as the Lord is moving and doing this thing, if you're not with him, you're going to be adversely affected. With him, declare his decrees out of your mouth in faith for the Lord knows who trusts him. You can't fool him. Okay? Let me keep going. This message, mm -hmm. because many of you have experienced this, and so many going to be experiencing it more because the Lord finna start putting the anointing on people younger and younger. It ain't got nothing to do with age. Age don't bring wisdom. A wise man speaks because he has something to say. That means the Lord be giving you some wisdom. And a fool speaks because he just have to say something. Some people just got to talk. Ain't there ain't no wisdom behind nothing they say. And this sounds fancy. People are like, hey man. I'll be like, they don't even realize how backwards to what that word just said. I, I, I'm, I'm in awe. Okay, you already saw the message I delivered. A uh, whole uh, baptized in the womb, five filled fetus. That they even will start to be baptized in the whole baptized in the Holy Spirit in the womb, just like John the Baptist was. But kids younger and younger are gonna start prophesying, not because they they press say, say this, say this, say this. You know, doing it for the camera to get likes. Y'all better watch that because you're teaching them to be fake and false, and you, that's not training them up. That's teaching them to be religious. Training them up is putting the word in them. Teaching them to do right from wrong and to be kind and to be loving. That's training them up. Making them do the fake shouts and stuff like that to put them on camera to get like, no. They're going to move in the spirit all on their own. Younger and younger. And y'all going to start to see this. But people are going to despise it. And many people have despised your youth already. And some of them are going to get moved. Okay? Let me get, let me get to this word. Okay? Woe to those who have despised the youth. Youthful anointed. Hold on. How did I do this? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Woe to those who have despised the youthful anointed, the appointed wise. I, I, I like that. I like it the other way around. Woe to those who have despised, because uh, I changed the name. <laughs> Woe to those who, because the Holy Spirit will give me that, because I was typing and thinking on it, and it got switched around. Woe to those who have despised. The youthful anointed, the wise appointed. I didn't type it in here back. I didn't change it. <laughs> okay, because I changed it on one thing without another. Woe to those who have despised the youthful anointed, the wise appointed. They think you don't have wisdom. Because I'm telling you, I done had this experience, and I hope that person is looking at this channel right now. For number one, I ain't as young as I look, but thank you. Nowhere near young as I look, okay? But when you judge after sight, I'm going to tell you what the Lord showed me. She judged after her sight. But the spirit that's going to be up on this youthful is, I'm going to take you to the scripture because it's in here, that he will not, he will judge in righteousness. He will not judge after his, his sight, nor the hearing of his ears, because wisdom don't judge that way. Spirit don't judge that way. And how I know she judged me by sight is she immediately talking about, there's people that have been around here young, longer than you have been alive, and you going to curse any of you who saw that COVID message, y'all know I ain't cursed nobody. I don't, you, people curse they stuff with their own words. Because I can show you scripture all day that sends their words back into their own bosom. Okay? Um, but because she called uh, COVID infallible, who would have a problem with you calling somebody a lie from the pit of hell from calling COVID infallible when we know that only the Lord is infallible? But I'm going to drop that like this and keep on going, okay? This message again, woe to those who have despised the youthful anointed, the wise appointed, because they were appointed. Let me get into Timothy. 1 Timothy 4, 1, uh, verse 12. Let no man, he said you don't let him do it, because Timothy was anointed. Let no man despise your, thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers in word. That means I keep walking wise or speaking wise in conversation, in the way you walk and talk. You just keep doing it. In charity, in your love. That means you still keep moving in genuine love. In spirit, you stay up hither in the spirit and let them get in their flesh looking at your youth because that's flesh. Okay? In faith, stay in your faith because you are who he called you to be. He made you. He named you. He called you. He qualified you. He started you. No man can stop you. And no one else can define you but the Lord. You can't even define you. Catch that. 
You can't even define yourself. Who made you? So who defines you? He ain't even gonna let you define yourself. So no one else can. So let no one despise your youth. So he said, just keep in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, and in purity. Your heart is pure. That's why they can't stand you. That heart is pure. And that light is hurting their demonic eyes. I keep telling you, spiritual eyes see. And they just annoyed with you because you shining in the spirit. And that light in the spirit is right in the face of that darkness in them. And it's agitating the flesh. And it's shown out. Now I'm going to read this. I'm smiting this four times with the arrow. The good word version, same verse. Don't let anyone look down on you for being young. Instead, make your speech, behavior, love, faith, and purity an example for others believers. You keep doing what you do. You keep doing what you've been appointed. You youthful anointed, wise appointed, and let them despise your youth. Because I got another message that's speaking on those who have despised you for years and look down. Now they're going to be despised. Because that's what curse means. Now they're going to be despised. They're going to be disregarded. Because they've disregarded you. I ain't delivered that yet. I might do that one next. Because they disregarded you. Now they're going to be disregarded. Let me go to the next mic. Okay. Amplified version. 1 Timothy 4 and 12. Let no one look down on you because you're you. Because of your youth, but be an example and set a pattern. Set a pattern because other people are watching you for the believers in speech and conduct and love and faith and in moral purity. More you are pure inwardly and outwardly. And the Lord and the, uh, the word of God says, All things are pure to the pure, all things are pure to who those are pure. So when your heart is truly pure, everything you do is pure, and you're going to be affected. And that's what they see, that's why they hate you. They blame it on you to you. But that's not what it is. Okay? That's how, they, that's how it manifests outwardly. But that's not why they're doing it inwardly. Okay? Let me read it in New Living Version. Let no one show little respect. Don't let them disrespect you. It don't mean you got to be puffed up and you ain't got to fight. That ain't what I mean. You ain't got to be confrontational. That ain't what I mean. Even though we do confront wickedness. Okay? We are we com we confrontational in the spirit. And sometimes physically. Or verbally in the flesh. Okay? Let no man show little respect for you because, you're, because you are young. Show other Christians, okay? Keep your walk and talk. How to live by your life. Your life is what shows people. Your life is your first ministry. That's why I don't know why y'all be following people. House just tore up. Kids all over the place. The, the, the appointed prophetess is an appointed prophet. Everything in their life is tore up. And they're making excuses and blaming everybody else. And y'all just running, falling. Y'all gonna be held accountable. I, I don't know how many more. This, 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 not. This word is established. I said it once. I said it again. I said it three times. That word is established. In the mouth of two or three witnesses, his witnesses are his word. I didn't told you again. We ain't talking about testifying against people. That's a different protocol. That's a different rule of engagement. Okay? How to live. Okay, yeah. Show other Christians how to live by your life. They should be able to follow you in the way you talk and what you do. Like Paul said, I want to provoke you to emulation. Because he follow, follow me as I follow Christ. We're supposed to walk like Christ. We're supposed to emulate goodness in other people. Emulate ain't just you trying to be them. You're emulating the godliness in them. Because they are emulating Christ. Okay? Show them how to live in faith and love. And in a, uh, uh, live in faith and in love. And in holy living. Okay? So woe to you. Woe to those who have despised. The youthful anointed, the wise appointed. You've been appointed, and they hate you because of it. Okay? Grace Nuggets. Discern the spirit of a woman. Oh, yeah. The, yeah, the spirit gave me the spirit of a woman who commented on the COVID-19 video. Already commented on that. He, uh, he told me exactly what spirit she came in, and I'm going to get to that, okay? Jealousy and lack of discernment. She scoffed. What she was doing was scoffing. And she had disdain for me. This is what, this is the spirit she came in. They comment. Of course, that comment never hit the channel. And they don't rattle me none, okay? Who got a problem that I, that I rebuke them saying COVID-19 is infallible going to kill us all? You guys have to rebuke my faith. <laughs> anyway, the Lord saw. And this is what the spirit, this is the spirit she came in. Jealousy and lack of discernment. And she scoffed and she had disdain for me, okay? Definition of despise. Because the message, woe to those who despise. 
to look down on with disdain. This is what he told me. I looked this up after the fact. To despise is to look down on you. They look down on you with disdain. Who is she? Who, who is she? That's why she came. You ain't been here longer. Than, there's people that have been on this earth longer than you. They've been alive and you're going to try to rebuke. That was disdain. She looked at me. How is she going to be rebuking somebody? There's people older. Oh, they got nothing to do with it. Wait till I get to that scripture. Ma'am. Okay. Look down on the, to, this, uh, the definition of despise. To look down with disdain. To detest, to hate, because that's what it is. It's a spirit of hate. To loathe, to abhor, to abominate. That was an abominable attitude she came in. To uh, uh, execrate, to regard with contempt. She had contempt just because I was bold enough to say it. To feel contempt for, she felt contempt for me because I was bold enough to say it. Okay? To shrink from, she has shrunk back from who she says she served. To be repelled by, to find intolerance. She was repelled. That's not, she didn't listen to the message. She was just offended the moment she saw me. Okay? The moment she read the title, this is the sermon. The moment she read the title and saw me, she was repelled. Okay? To deplore, to dislike, and she don't even know me. To scorn, to disdain. I already put that in there. To slight, to look down on, to heap scorn on. She thinks she can heap scorn. Not going to work out too well. To deride, to scoff. I told you she scoffed because the spirit let me know that's what she was doing. To sneer at, to mock. It was a form of mocking. You ain't been alive long enough. And to revile. The Lord saw. He got that. Trust me, he got it. Okay? Now let's read the definition of disdain. Okay? A communication that indicates lack of respect by patronizing the recipient. She had no respect for the anointing. And that's why he said, that's why I told you this is the spirit she came in. Okay? Because the Holy Spirit showed me. She had jealousy in her heart. She had lack of discernment or she would know I was baptized and took the Holy Spirit and moved him by fire. That was a rainbow word from the Lord I delivered. And she had no discernment of it. She scoffed and she disdained me. Okay? I'm using this because you need to recognize this stuff. Okay? Lack of respect and patronizing the recipient. Lack of respect accompanied by a feeling of intense dislike. Intense dislike and don't even know you. That should tell you what spirit she's coming in. To look down on with disdain. To reject with contempt. Reject with contempt and don't even know you. And it was a far-filled ring of word I delivered that was dropped as I was cleaning my house. In obedience. Lack of discernment, jealousy, and disdain. And scoffing toward me. The feeling that someone or something is unworthy, this is what she said. That's why she said, You ain't been alive long enough. How you gonna correct this thing? The feeling that someone or something is unworthy of one's consideration or respect. You ain't even worthy of my consideration or respect. Oh, yeah, I'm gonna deliver that uh, disregard message next, okay? To contempt, to score, to scornful, contemptuous, to have derision, to have show disrespect, to show uh, discouragement. To uh, discouragement, uh, uh, to super saliciousness, haughtiness, she, she, she came in all haughtiness and pride and arrogance, snobbishness, aloofness, indifference, dismissiveness, she was dismissive, distaste, dislike, disgust, and despite because I dared reject the demonic prophecy that COVID 19 is infallible. Okay? Again, this message, woe to those who have despised the youthful anointed, the wise appointed. Let me keep going, okay? It is clear that age does not automatically bring wisdom and understanding. Let me take you to the scripture in Job. Lord showed me this a while ago. Age don't give wisdom. It's some old fools and some old dummies and some old prostitutes and some old pimp daddies and some old gradies and some old sugar daddies and some old dummies. Don't you assume because people are older they wise. It's more people all moving in hate and suppressing the spiritual growth of the youth and that's why many of them are going to go on. They're suppressing spiritual growth in the youth because they love the preeminence and they're not moving in wisdom. They're moving in hate. They're moving in jealousy. They're moving in disdain. They're moving in scoffing. Enough. In the name of Jesus Christ. 
Okay? Let's read Job 32, 6 through 10. I'm going to read it in the King James Version and the Message Version because I'm going to hit it twice with the arrow. I'm smiting. Okay? And Elihu, the son of Barakachel, the, the Bruzite, answered and said, I am young, and you are very old. Wherefore, I was afraid. This is what they want you to be. So I want you to read the scripture. Wherefore, I was afraid and does not show you my opinion. This time is over. Okay? I, it, I said, they should speak. This is what the young man said, because he was trying, trying to be respectful. They should speak, and multitude of years should teach wisdom. This is what this young man is saying. He said, oh, well, I was afraid to speak, because I say they, people that got days, they've been on this earth should speak. And those with multitude of years should teach wisdom. They should teach wisdom. Catch that word, should. Okay? But there is a spirit in man. But there is a spirit in man. And the inspiration of the Almighty giveth them understanding. Great men are not always wise. Catch this. That's why they listen to all these people with money. Great men are not always wise. That word great also can mean old. Great men are not always wise. Neither do aged understand judgment. Therefore, I said, then he began to speak. I want you to, I think you should read all that Job 32, 6, and all, all Ellen who had to say, because he read them. This young, wise man read them. Okay? Great men are not always wise. Neither do the age understand judgment. Therefore, I said, hearken unto me. I also will show you my opinion. He said, because I've been sitting here listening to y'all. He basically said, I've been sitting here listening to y'all. Could criticize this man for days, and I ain't heard no wisdom. I ain't heard nothing. This is just plum stupidity. This young man sitting here with him. He's like, this is just all stupidity. This is where we are now. These old heads are suppressing the youthful growth. A lot of them finna start going home. A lot of them finna go home. A lot of them finna get removed out of positions. The the fire of God finna bubble up in these young people, and they're gonna speak what thus says the Lord. So those who despise your youth, he's gonna deal with. He's gonna deal with those who have despised your youth. And he's gonna remove those who block the wise anointed. Or shall I say? <laughs> the youthful anointed, the wise appointed. Okay? Let me read this in the message. This is what Elihu, son of Barakel, the Buzite, said. I'm a young man. I just want to do it in plainer language because sometimes people just understand better. And you are all old and experienced. That's why I kept quiet. And I held back from joining the discussion. He listened to them for days. I kept thinking, and this is what he's doing why they talking for days. I kept thinking, experience will tell because he was waiting to hear some wisdom that never came. The longer you live, the wiser you become. That's he said what he was thinking while he was watching them talk for days. Catch the next verse. But I see I was wrong. Okay? Oh, don't mean wisdom. I see you. I see I was wrong. The Lord showed me a long time ago. That ain't wisdom. But I, he says, but I see I was wrong. It's God's spirit in a person. Not just the fact that you got the spirit. Do you yield to that spirit? There's people that got the spirit that don't yield. There's, there's people that got the, the claim they've been baptized with the Holy Spirit and he ain't had a chance to say nothing in 20 years. <laughs> they had the spirit for 20 years and he ain't got to speak none of it. They had the spirit for 10 years and he ain't never got to say a word. So having the spirit, I mean, how much have you yielded to that spirit? You don't mean you wise. He said, I see I was wrong. It is God's spirit in a person. The breath of the Almighty One. That makes wise human insight possible. The only way it makes it insight possible, not just the spirit being in you, you have to yield to it. And too many of them like the preeminence, and too many of them are jealous, and too many of them have this thing, too many of them have this composition. That's why you won't have all the women even teaching younger women to be women, because they're too busy trying to be the young chick. It ain't no wisdom going forth in this general in this older people in this generation. I'm not saying none, y'all. Now don't take this word and say literally. It is some women of God. But the class is small. You hear me? It's a class, but it's a small class. Okay? The experts have no corner of uh, the experts. That means all these wise uh, COVID-19 and experts. The experts have no corner on wisdom. Getting old doesn't guarantee good sense. So I've decided to speak up. And this young man said, listen well. I'm going to tell you exactly what I think. 
He said that I've been sitting here listening to y'all for days. Yipping and yipping and yipping and yipping and yapping. You all know, often I hear people just saying stuff and it ain't no wisdom and it's so backwards and upside down. Everybody say, oh, glory to God, amen. And I'm like, this is utter foolishness. I'm going to keep repeating this message. Woe to those who have despised the youthful anointed, the wise appointed. Time's up, okay? Y'all finna see the youth moving power. I just delivered a message. The rise of the David, the fall of the souls is connected. Okay? Let me keep going. Grace Nugget. It is not the passing of time, but the yielding of the mind that brings the wisdom. Yielding of the mind to who? Yielding your mind to the Holy Spirit and even your own correction is how you're going to get wise. Because wisdom don't keep you from going through things. Wisdom talk to you while you're going through it so that you come out wise. Some people go through things and they just come out beat up, bruised, and battered. You, if you listen to wisdom while you go through it, you come out ascended. So you got two people that are going through turmoil in their life. Wisdom is talking. To one, wisdom is talking, one is listening to wisdom, and one is rejecting, because a lot of times it means you got to correct yourself. So wisdom is talking to you while you're going through it. You just, both people can come out at the end, one come out hardened and worse, and other one come out ascended and wise. Age don't bear wisdom, but it's the yielding to the Spirit of God. Okay? I write to you young men and women, because Adam means man, Adam means woman. Okay? Male and female are Adam. Okay? You are strong. 1 John 2 and 14. I have written unto you fathers because you, you have known him that is from the beginning. I have written unto you young men because you are strong and the word of God abides in you and you have overcome the wicked one. Okay? Did I leave off the other half of that? Oh, no, young men, you are strong. Okay. The gen this generation, the judges by righteousness. This is the generation that's coming forth. Okay. So, woe unto you who despise the youthful anointed, the wise that are appointed. Okay. Isaiah, oh, goodness, 11 and 3. And, sh and shall make him, I want you to read all this, 11 on your own time. And shall make him a quick understanding. Because you are in Christ. It's to yield unto the Spirit, remember. And shall make him of quick understanding. Because he's talking about the Lord here. You are in the Lord. And when you yield to him, you get all that he is and you are all that he is. This is the youth that's coming up. This is why they will be used while he's old here trying to crush him. And you shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord. And he shall not, not judge after his sight of his eyes, neither reprove. After the hearing of his ears, because it's deeper than that. Eyes of sight let you see what's said and not said. Eyes of sight and wisdom help you see far ahead. Eyes of sight help you see in faith what's in their heart, which is truly what they're joined by. What's the motives behind what they said? What's the motives behind what you saw? What's the motives behind it? That's how you're not going to judge by sight or by your hearing. I'm going to read in the Amplified Version. And he will delight in the fear of the Lord. And he will not judge by what his eyes see, nor make decisions by what his ears hear, because it's always more than what you see in her. And to judge by what you only saw in her without the spirit, which weighs the motives, the thoughts, and intents of the heart, you are not judging in righteousness. That's why just because you see it don't mean you're always going to say something. Okay? You will be quick to discern and quick to discern their spirit and yours. Quick to understand the time and the purpose of a thing. You must not only speak the word of God when he says, or uh, speak what he says, but when he says, because that's when it's effective. You speak right words in due season, and that's those are the forcible words. How forcible are right words in due season? The sent word is the quickened word. Okay? You need to understand, you're not going to judge by sight. Because the word of God tells us no flesh will glory in his presence. That's not just physical flesh. And that's in 1 Corinthians 1, 29-31. No flesh shall glory in his presence. That's not just physical skin being shown. That's what you look up. You want to be hoisted up by other people. That's your flesh. You are in the argument rather than hold your tongue. That's flesh. 
It's more important to be true than right. True is mean true mean moving when he say move, speaking when he say speak. Pleasing him in your actions. It is better to be true than to be right. To be right is to win that argument. You're not going to judge by the hearing of your ears or the sight of eyes, but this body that's coming up in this youthful going to judge by righteousness, by the soul of the spirit and wisdom. Even if the Lord going to have you rebuke that person, even in the time he have you do it, matters. So again, woe to you who despise the youthful anointed, the wise appointed, because many of you are about to get pulled down and removed. Many of you who have despised the youth and suppressed these young ones and disregarded them are going to now be disregarded. Prepare. The rise of the Davids and the fall of the souls. The youthful, far-filled body. That's all I got. I'm, I'm, I'm going to move to the next message. Grace be with you, beloved. Circulate this message when I load in. Make sure you listen to it. Again, make sure you click all the bells. Those of you who do not know Christ Jesus as your Lord and Savior, time is shorter than you think. And when I mean time, the door is going to close to where the Gentiles, you won't, you're going to be given over. The door is closing for receiving of the gospel. You're going to stand before a holy God all by yourself. Your hype men ain't going to be there. Your boosters ain't going to be there. Your family's not going to be there. It's just going to be you. And you're going to hear, depart from me, I never knew you. I'll come beloved of the Lord into everlasting joy and righteousness. Don't let other people and y'all gang mentality and cook mentality send you to hell. Receive Christ your Lord. You can't clean yourself up. And it don't mean you're going to immediately stop doing everything you're doing. But you must receive Christ Jesus as your Lord and Savior. There is no other way. No other access. No other name by which we must be saved. He will meet you in your home. I have a prayer of salvation on my page. You can listen to it over and over again. Find the scripture, read the word, ask the Lord Jesus to come into your heart and surrender your life to him. All that he has. What's in his heart? And what, you automatically get what's in his hand when you have what's in his heart. When you have him, you have all that he is. So you go, you reach for him. Time is short. Share this message, beloved. Grace be with you and I love you all. Did you know that when you hit thumbs up, you enable more to be fed by the very message that just fed you? So share the spiritual meal, feed others, work a righteous work, work at evangelism by working the thumb. Thumbs up, feed more. Thumbs up, feed more. So into the good ground of preach be a voice not an echo, yet only as you have purposed in your heart. For God loves a cheerful giver. The truth, the truth of the word of God. Word of God. First Corinthians 9:11 reads, If we have sown into your spiritual things, is it a great thing if we shall reap your carnal things? Give only with purpose and cheer, for we desire fruit that will abound towards your account. We thank you for all of your support, seed of your time, seed of your prayers, and the purpose seed of your gifts. To give, visit our YouTube channel and click on the PayPal logo or go directly to PayPal using the following links or email preachbvne at yahoo.com. To listen to more messages and for the latest updates and offers, visit www.preachbvne.webs.com. Also view messages on the YouTube channel at www.youtube.com slash C slash preach be a voice not an echo ministry. Also like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Do the work of an evangelist. Watch it, then share it. Beloved, we wish above all things that you will prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prospers. Grace be with you. Thank you for joining us today on Preach, Be a Voice, Not an Echo. We pray that you were encouraged and empowered by today's message. Until next time. 
we encourage you to hang on to God's unchanging hand and preach. Grace be with you.